In this video, I'll be introducing how you can change the order of integration, the order of these differentials in a triple integral. So right here we have the integral that's over the surface that is bound by the plane z equals zero, the cylinder z equals one minus y, the cylinder y equals x squared, the plane y equals one, and the planes x equals minus one and x equals one. It's bound between all of these planes and cylinders. Here's a visualization of it using an animation. Here you can see a graph of the region that we're integrating over. Right on the bottom you can see the map y equals x squared cut off at y equals 1. And up here you can see the plane y equals 1 minus z or z equals 1 minus y. And we just show the region between all these. Now let's go ahead and change the order of the integration here. So let's say we have an integral, integral, integral. I'm spacing these out so that you can clearly see what I'm writing on the bottom. And then f of x, y, z, but I'm going to have dy, dx, dz instead. How on earth could I do this? Well, the question is, what is y changing between? Well, let's look at the equations that involve y. z equals 1 minus y, z equals x squared, and y equals 1. Now, y equals 1 isn't even important here, as you'll see. And um, these two are the only important ones. So I have y equals x squared and y equals 1 minus z. Now, the question is, which one of these is on the top and which one is on the bottom? Well. Look at this animation of the cross sections, and it'll be pretty easy to see which one's on the top and which one's on the bottom. Here, you can see the xz plane intersecting y. Right here, y is changing. Let's go ahead and look at it from z's position. Okay, now the z, it's changing between 1 minus z and x squared. 1 minus z, this white part, is going to be there, x squared is going to be on the bottom, and that's going all the way until 1 minus z. Here I have x squared and it's going between x squared and 1 minus z, the white part. So the white part is at the top part of the integral and the x squared is at the bottom part of the integral. As you can see from the animation, it's very clear that x squared is on the bottom and 1 minus z is on the top. So this is going to be between y equals x squared and y equals 1 minus z. And the reason why I don't even mention the y equals 1 is because the y equals 1 is in between those two functions as well. Okay, so now, how do I work with this? Well, what I have to do is find the place where these two cylinders intersect, and that will give me my next value for this integral. So let's find out where x squared is equal to 1 minus z. The surface we need to integrate over next is this white surface at the top. And the reason why we need to do this is because it's the intersection of this x squared and the plane z equals 1 minus y, and so this is the maximal surface that we're going to be integrating over next. And if I just project this down onto the xz plane, it'll look like this. So here you can see this is the curve, and this is the z-axis, this is the x-axis, and if you imagine implementing this back into 3D space, it looks just like that white surface we had to integrate over. Well, guess what? Our next variable is going to be x. So x here is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus z. If you look at the animation of the cross sections, you can see that these are the functions we have to worry about. Okay, so I'm doing this between x equals negative the square root 1 minus z 
and x equals the square root 1 minus z. I needed to have that minus there because remember, on the xz plane, like this, the function here goes like that. Okay, now, what's the interval between z uh, on z? Well, we have z equals 0, so that's going to be the bottom here. And we also have an intersection right here, which is z equals 1. So that's going to be up here. And if you look at the cross sections, you'll be able to see that z equals 1 is the top. Now let's do another one. Let's do maybe integral, 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 f of x, y, z, and then do dz and switch dx and dy. Let's go ahead and figure out dz here. Well, z goes from 0 until 1 minus y. There's nothing I'm changing here. There's no need. Now, x is the one I have to worry about. So let's look at the functions that involve x and y. The surface we need to integrate over now is going to be where the two boundaries on z are going to be which is 0 and 1 minus y, right here. This surface right here on the xy plane, we need to integrate over this. Well, I know that y is equal to x squared, which means that x is equal to plus or minus the square root of y. And as it turns out, as you can see from the cross sections, these are the functions that are bounded. So this is going to be from x equals minus the square root of y until x equals the square root of y. Now, what about y? What's y going between? Well, I have y equals 1. And if I graph this function on the xy plane, this function looks like this. So I have x here is going between 1 and minus 1, right? Those are my bounds. x equals minus 1, x equals 1. So these are my lines going up. And so y here is going between 1 and 0. So y equals 0 until y equals 1. Now let's go ahead and look at a different one. Say the integral, integral, integral. Let's do the order dy, and instead of doing dx dz, let's do dz dx. Okay, this should be simple enough. I already know y is going between x squared and 1 minus z from before. And now, all I have to do is look at the same thing, except look at z first. So I have 1 minus z equals x squared. So that z equals 1 minus x squared. And I also have z equals 0. So I have z equals 0 until z equals 1 minus x squared. Cool. Now, what's x going to be between? Well, minus 1 and 1. It's that simple. Now, we have one more to do. And this is going to be the integrals f of x, y, z, and we already did dy, both of the dy's, we did both of the dz's, and so I need to do dx, it can't be dy and dz, so it's dz dy. This is the last one we have to do. So x, as I said before, is between minus the square root of y and positive the square root of y because it doesn't depend on x. You can change x all you want. It just... This fact is evident from the animations. As you can see in the cross sections, it's always changing between minus square root of y and square root of y, no matter what your z value is. x here always has square root of y up until right when it reaches past this point, at which point it's the negative square root of y. What you can see here is that x, no matter what the z value is, right here, this line going straight up, is always going to be the same. The x value 
in each of these cross sections is always the same. Now what I have to do is integrate over this function, this white line. This white line right here, because this is the maximal curve we're going to be doing. So this blue section and this white line are going to be what we're integrating over next. This is it right here. It's y equals 1 minus z, or z equals 1 minus y, it doesn't matter. It's just this little triangle. And this is the last region we're integrating over. And it's very, very simple. Z here goes is this line, Y here is this line. If we're changing Z first, so we're moving along Z, you can clearly see that it's going between 0 and 1 minus Y. And then the next one is going to be Y between 0 and 1. So Z equals 0 till 1 minus Y. Then Y is going to have to be from 0 until 1. You can see that this is exactly the same as the one black pen red pen did, it's just that I switched out y and z. It's just like changing the variable name without actually changing any of the values. So that's not very interesting. And that's why I just squeezed it in right here at the bottom. And that's it.